How many of you know that God will supply? He'll supply. Not just some of your needs. But he'll supply what? All of your needs. Bless the Lord. God bless you. God bless you. Everyone standing. Everyone standing. God will supply. Yes, sir. Yes, he will. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He will supply. I know he will. I know he will. Yes, sir. Bless his name. Bless his name. God bless you. Just turn to your neighbor and tell him God will supply. Yes, he will. Woo! 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 We honor the Lord. We honor the Lord today, and we praise God for your presence on this Lord's day. What a mighty God we serve. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wonderful to know that he's still yet on the throne. Mm. Yes, he's working things out for our good. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We celebrate not only the Lord Jesus Christ, but we celebrate those in whom God has joined to the family of faith. Uh, we thank God for our many years. On this Saturday, uh, we will be celebrating the homegoing of Sister Little. And uh, she lived to be 99 years old. Amen. Praise God. Isn't that amazing? My, my, amen. To God we praise. And then we celebrate one who's among us, a man who turned 95 this week. And the person and personality of Brother Cephas Hardgrove. Amen. 95, how about that? 95. All right, Brother Cephas. And um, Brother Cephas doesn't look like he's going to slow down any day, anytime soon. He just keeps on going. We bless God for you and what you mean to the Pilgrim Baptist Church and all that you've done for us. God bless you. God bless you, Cephas. Hey, man, I was saying to, um, in our... Uh, hour of consecration at 7 a.m. to one of our members. I asked, I said, uh, you think you're going to make a, a, a 99? And this person says, I hope to, Pastor. Well, I, I don't know about you, but I hope to make 99 close as I can get to 99. Amen. So, so we are, we're, we're elated and excited, and we celebrate with you, Cephas. Yes. Amen. Praise God. Now, 
Now, did you have a party? They did. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. Amen. Because if they all oh, the chicken and amen, and amen, cake and all of that. The kids came over. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. If if they didn't have a party for you, I was gonna make the deacons have one for you. Any anybody that turned ninety five ought to have a party. Amen. 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 You don't have to worry about if I get 95, they don't have to worry about having a party for me. Because I'm going to have my own party. I, amen. Amen. I'll set it up, buy the food, do all of that. I'm going to have a party. Amen. And invite them to come. How about that? <laughs> Praise God. God bless you today. Amen. Uh, you enjoyed worship today? Good, wonderful. Those of you who have your Bibles, turn with me to 1 Peter chapter 1. If you're with me, say amen. amen. I'll be reading from the New International Version of the Bible, beginning at verse 3. It reads this way. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade, kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. We want to spend our time in verses 6, 7, and, and 8. I wanted to just kind of read those previous verses for you so that you can look and see the segue of, of the thought of our writer. Again, verse 6. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come, let the church say these have come, so that your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes, even though refined by fire, may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Amen. I want to talk to us from the subject this morning, reasons to be optimistic reasons to be optimistic. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask your blessings now upon the word of God. Help us to preach once again, God, to the end that someone, God, will receive a rhema word from you and their life will be radically changed. We thank you, God, for what is ours to receive. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated in the presence of our, our God. story is told about this mother who had a set of twins and uh, the set of twins unlike identical twins these two twins were opposite in a sense one was a a 
optimist and the other one was a pessimist. And so she was concerned about them, so she took them to the doctor to find out, you know, what she could do to probably bring the boys closer together. The doctor told her that he wanted you to try something uh, with the optimist and then the pessimist. She said, what I want you to do is I want you to give the pessimist a brand new bicycle, brand new top of the line bicycle and, and give it to him and find out what his response would be. And then I want you to give to the, 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 the optimist, I want you to give him a, a box of manure and then determine and find out how he responds. So she did, she took the doctor's advice and she bought her, her twins these gifts to them. She bought the one that was a pessimist, brought him a brand new swing bicycle. How many of you remember what the, well, maybe, amen. She brought him a, a brand new bicycle, top of the line, and, and the fellow was excited about it. And he says, you know, he says, well, he said, thank you. He says, but all I'm going to do is get on this bike and I'll, 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 I'll fall over and break my leg. Well, she gave the, the, the optimist that box of manure. She gave it to him and, and he looked at it and he unwrapped it and uh, he said, wow, you can't fool me. He says, amen, with this, this, this box of manure, he said, there's got to be a horse out there somewhere. How, how, how many you know? You've got pessimists and you've got optimists. And how many know there's some folks that are pessimists that can take a happy day? You, you don't know anybody like that, do you? A perfectly beautiful, marvelous day that the sun is shining. Don't have a witness here. <laughs> Amen. By, by the time you finish talking to them, you think there's a storm. You're in a storm. But so, so I, I, I wanted to share with you to say that there are reasons to be optimistic. And I know things look bad today. I know that our economy and crime and violence and, you know, looking at the news, news stories around the globe, there, the picture that is painted is a terrible picture of, of our society. It's in upheaval and it's a moral decay. De decay. We, we see things all the time. Headlines in the media suggest our world is in a mess, y'all. It's in a mess. And good news is hard to find. How many of you know that people live by their feelings more than anything else, more, amen, more times than not? If you listen to people talk, you'll hear more about their feelings than anything else. I was sharing this week, and I told the early service that I went to the uh, Motor Vehicle Asso uh, Association and had to take care of some business there, and there was a lady that wanted to talk to me and share with me, and she just wanted to just kind of tell me about her feelings. She said that she didn't feel like living. And one thing led to another, and the whole conversation was about her feelings. And so the question lies before us, church, amen, are we serving the God of our feelings or are we serving the God of the Bible? And how many of you know that the God of the Bible should trump your feelings every time? Amen. There are a whole lot of people that determine how you feel, and based on how you feel, you, you do things. And so there's trouble on top of trouble. But the sad part of all of this is the fact that when we read the headlines and ponder the news, y'all, that is happening in our world, and when we think about our own problems and our own trials and our own burdens, we tend to get caught up in it to the point of a losing heart. Am I talking to anybody up in here? And sometimes we're guilty of allowing the world around us to steal our joy. That's God. Amen. And how many of you know that, that, that God doesn't want our heart to be at, at that point? We don't want the world to steal our joy based on what we see that's going on in our world. And so the truth is, the truth is this, that, that, that you don't come to church to talk about your troubles. Do I have a witness here? I said, you don't come to church to talk about, amen, uh, what, 
what big of a mess the world is in. Help me somebody. But we come to church so that we can find reasons to be optimistic. <laughs> Help me somebody. After all, the world has beat you up one side and down the other. And so the church is the last place where you want to come and get beat up again. Do I have a witness here? You've come so that you can lay your burdens down. You've come so that somebody can open the window of your life and so that you can look out it and be optimistic about what your tomorrow holds. And so I don't know about you, my brothers and my sisters, I, I'm happy and, and glad to share with you from this text today to let you know that there are some reasons to be optimistic. You may not see any right now because maybe you, like other pessimists, are singing a sad song or you singing the blues. But I've come by to tell you, amen, as long as God is on the throne, you have reasons to be optimistic. Are y'all with me here? Amen. So let me give you the backdrop of the text, the backdrop of the text, the first verse, literally, I didn't read it until you're hearing, Peter addresses this letter to the strangers scattered, if you will. He is writing to a Jewish believers, a group of Jewish believers who have been forced to leave their homeland and have found themselves dispersed into other parts of the world. These people, amen, because of their belief and faith are being subjected to persecution and suffering. Peter is writing to them out of his own pain and his own suffering, about his own issues, and he writes to encourage them in their faith. He was reminding them that in the midst of their trials, amen, that there is a, a, a reliable reasons to rejoice. And I want somebody to understand there's some reliable reasons to rejoice. How I many you know it's easy to forget who you are in Jesus and where you're going in Jesus when you look at the world's chaos. Are y'all with me here? And so this passage, y'all, serves as a reminder of who we are and why we should be optimistic. Amen. I know for some of you, amen, you, you're still not buying in yet uh, to be, why to be optimistic because, because of all the stuff that has happened in, in your life. Well, just walk with me just for a minute. I want you to understand that everything is in doom and gloom. Do I have a witness here? I said everything is in doom and, and gloom. And so he talks to us and he shares with us about some things and these previous verses that I wrote with you. Amen. He says that we need to realize some things as believers and we have a reason to be optimistic, first of all, because we have a living hope. Let the church say a living hope. It's a living hope. Amen. He says, praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth. We have a living hope. Amen. How many know there's some misguided hope? But we have a, it's a misguided hope. And, and, and some people live on misguided hope. I told him this morning, misguided hope is like me getting in the ring with Mike Tyson. Amen. That, that's misguided hope. Do I have a witness here? Amen. And some of you have some misguided hope, though, misguided hope. And that's why we got to be careful as preachers not to misguide people. Misguided hope. When you know you don't have a job and you go up to the dealership and, amen, and you try to buy a car and don't have a job, do I have a witness here? Amen. Amen. And that's misguided what? Hope. Misguided hope. Well, understand that we have a living hope. In the Lord Jesus Christ, he's a living hope. We have an, an, a lasting inheritance. That's verse 4. And then we have a long-term salvation. Somebody say hallelujah. Amen. And it's not just short term. It's not when we, amen, mess up or when we blow it. But we have an eternal, we have eternal salvation. And so thank God for long-term salvation. And so we have here now in verse 6, he comes along and he shares with us. He wants us to understand. He encourages his readers to rejoice in our common state. But also he wants us to prepare for what is to come. I like this reading, I like this, this rendering, I like what Peter, Peter writes for us because he, on, one, on, one, on one side uh, he gives us a reason to rejoice, but on, yet on the other side he also says, I want you to be prepared for what is to come. So what are you saying, preacher? He wants us to keep in mind, amen, because there is a word of reality. Let the church say reality. 
It's a word of reality. Rejoicing should be commonplace. We ought to praise God. We ought to honor God. We ought to worship God, just like you did a few minutes ago. That, that, that's do him. But how many of you understand that in verse 6 he says, In all of this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, while you may have to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. He says, now you rejoiced on one side, but I also want to remind you that trials and tribulation will show up, amen, in your life. Do I have a witness here? Literally, he puts it in this term, y'all. He says, your salvation and your coming to church does not guarantee us immunity from trials. So I want somebody to understand that just because you came to church today doesn't mean that what you were worried about last Wednesday is just going to automatically go away. And so church is not just some magic wand that you show up and everything's all right tomorrow. And so there's a word about reality. The reality is that you can rejoice with God now, but yet you've got to go through some trials and tribulation and some problems in your life. Are y'all with me here? Amen. Did I tell you? Did I tell you? Amen. Children, I mean, Christians get sick. I said Christians get sick. Amen. Christian marriages fall apart. Christian parents have trouble with their children. I should have got two or three more airmans over here. Do I, do I have a witness here? Christians have financial trouble. Christians walk through some pretty dark valleys. Amen. Understand that that's the reality. Stuff will come. Stuff will come. Amen. You'll have some difficult days, some tough times. The bottom will fall out. You will have some difficult times. Understand that's the reality. But he also says that we have to rejoice. John chapter 16 verse 33. He says, these things have I spoken unto you that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. But listen to what he said. Be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Amen. The late D. Allen Creighton used to say, and you can do likewise. How many of you know that if he's overcome, you can also overcome the problems and the situation and the troubles that's in your life? That's the reality. Are y'all with me here? I said that's the reality, reality, that we, we, we will have some, some problems in, in, in our lives. And so here it is, you're, you, you're to be, amen, optimistic. You're going to be optimistic, amen, know that God is still on the throne. And the reason why you ought to be optimistic is because, amen, understand that whatever happened in your life, it didn't take God by surprise. Are oh, y'all with me here? I said it didn't take God, it may have taken you by surprise. But it didn't take God by surprise. And since it didn't take God by surprise, you have to understand that God had already made a way of escape for you. He had already made a way for you to overcome, for you to get through and pass that situation. He had already, amen, called for your healing on the other side of your sickness. And so it did not take God by surprise. Somebody ought to shout right there that when you look at where you are and what you have gone through, amen, you may have been taken by surprise but it didn't take God by surprise and that's why some of you are here today that's why some of you are well today that's why some of you are alive today do I have a wish? that's why some of you are walking today why? because it did not take God by surprise uh, it didn't take me by surprise interesting, interesting God is a great God I said he's a great God I said he's a great God I'm trying to get somebody else to say, yes, he, I, God is a what? He's a great God. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. And so the reality, reality, I love this second part of the text that when he talks, amen, he reads and says that though, amen, you'll go through this for a little while, I want you to understand that whatever you're going through is just temporary. I said it's just temporary. Amen. It's just temporary. You get, you're getting ready to come out. Amen. It's just temporary. And so you may have gone to bed at night with a burden on your shoulder, you, but you should have got up this morning and said, it's just temporary. That you may have gone to bed last night with some problems and some other issues, but your rising this morning should say, it's just temporary. Do I have a witness here? You may have gone to bed unemployed, but you ought to get up in the morning and say, it's just temporary. You may have gone to bed with doors closed in your 
of faith, but you should rise and say, it's just temporary. Is there anybody here, amen, that will say it's just temporary? It's just for a little while. Do I have, a, you see me now, amen. I may be struggling right now, but it's just temporary. Doors may be closed in my face right now, but it's just temporary temporary. Do I have a witness here? It may look like I've lost my mind right now based on all that I'm going through, but I've come by to tell you it's just it's just temporary. Look like you may be walking all by yourself. Amen. You can't find a friend anywhere, but I've come by to tell you you ought to speak to yourself and talk to yourself. It's just temporary. Do I have a witness here? The Bible says that he will be a friend to the friendless. It's just temporary. Come on and shout hallelujah. I said come on and shout hallelujah. Yes, I'm going through. Yes, I'm snowed under. Yes, I have burdens, but it's just temporary. Ah, praise his name. Praise his name. Amen. If you don't shout, I'll shout. Yeah. Yeah. Help me somebody. Amen. I know you've been there. I know you've asked God why and when. Amen. When, God. When, when, when. I've come by to tell you, amen, you can't dictate to God. And so he doesn't operate a crawl into chronos time. But he operates according to Cairo's time. And Cairo's time is God's timing. Do I have a witness here? And so when you think you're at the end, God says you can go a little further. Do I have a witness here? Somebody looking at me strange. How do you know I, I can go a little further? Because if he keeps waking you up in the morning... Do I have a witness here? That means that he's given you what you need to go another day and another day and another week and another month. Do I have a witness here? Because God operates in Cairo's time. And when God gets ready, God can deliver you and bring you out and straighten things out. That's the reality. The reality is what you see is not who I'm going, I'm going to be on tomorrow. Do I have a witness? Help me somebody. Praise God. Praise God. You got to see things that are not as though they were. Help me somebody. Amen. That's why, the, amen, the fellow tells the story about, about, the, about the mother that didn't have anything, food, and she didn't know what she was going to do. She grabbed the children together, told them to get around the table. She set the table, put the plates down, put the forks down. The amen. And, and her children thought she was crazy. They said, what you doing, mama? We ain't got any food. Amen. She says, but I'm anticipating food showing up. And so I'm just going to be ready. Do I have a witness here? Amen. And the reality is that God said that if I was hungry, he'd feed me. He'd make a way. And so, so reality. How many you know that rough times come? If Job was here, he'll tell you. Help me somebody. I said, if Job was here, he'll tell you that you, what, what Satan will do, he'll attack your faith. Amen. I said, he'll attack your faith. Isn't it something, isn't it interesting, amen, that Satan knows where to hit us that will affect us the most? He'll affect and hit what you believe and what you trust. Amen. And try to get you to trust something other than trusting in God. Do I have a witness here? And so, so there's a word about reality. But not only see in the text a word about reality, but there's a word about realignment. Let the church say realignment. Realignment. Listen to what verse 7 says. He says, these have come so that they prove genuine of your faith, another translation, of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus is revealed. Somebody say hallelujah. It's interesting, y'all, that he writes to us and he wants us to understand as Satan attacks our faith, you have to recognize that, that our faith is not the first person that he has attacked, amen, your, your faith and my faith, he, he has attacked others, those in the Bible, remember he attacked Peter, he attacked his faith, amen, he attacked Stephen and Paul and all of the rest, they suffered for Jesus, 
Amen. And so you're in good company if Satan is attacking you for your faith. You're in good company. Do I have a witness here? Interesting enough that Peter does this. Watch this. Peter, amen, shares with us about our, our faith. He shares with us about what we should do, but he gives us an illustration. Peter here plays upon a great image, uh, the goldsmith. And the goldsmith, y'all, would melt the metal down until it became a liquid. All of the impurities would come to the surface and the goldsmith would scrape them off and allow the metal to cool. Then he would come a back and repeat the process over and over again. Somebody ought to hear me. And so his gold was pure gold. I said his gold was pure gold. Well, how did he know when he had pure gold, when no impurities came to the surface, or when he could see his reflection in the melted gold? Do I have a witness here? Amen. Can I say to somebody today, the reason why you keep going through what you're going through is because Jesus has not seen his reflection. Do I have a witness here? And so wherever you are and whoever you are, and maybe that's why you keep going under <laughs> and you keep going down and he keeps bringing you up. And every time he brings you up, he don't see anything that looks like him. And so you have to go back down again and amen and he brings you back up again and he's going to keep taking you down and bringing you up until he began to see something that looks like him. Help me somebody. And I don't know who I'm talking to today and I don't know where you are and I don't know why you're saying why do I keep going through because Jesus wants to make sure that he sees his reflection, amen, in your life and your living and what you do and what you say and how you act and how you respond. Some of y'all still looking at me strange. Maybe you like being, re amen, that process being repeated over and over and over again. But I don't know about you, amen. I don't like to be bruised. I don't like to be hurt. I don't like to be burnt. I don't like to go under. Do I have a witness here? Amen. I want to be on top and I don't want to be beneath. And so I want God to see his reflection in me. And so that's why you've got to learn how to talk like Jesus and walk like Jesus and amen, act like Jesus and function like Jesus. Do I have a, and think like Jesus. Do I have a witness? This is what Peter, Peter says, that our faith is like gold, y'all. Our faith is like gold. As it is tested, it will bring, amen, begin to bring the impurities to the surface. And when the impurities are removed, our faith becomes more valuable. Do I have a witness here? And so gold is the standard by which we define value. Amen. We say these things, worth is its, its weight of gold. The golden boy, the golden age. Our jewelry is made of gold. And we trade it in. And in Peter's world and in our world, gold was considered one of the most valuable things a person could have. Well, while gold is valuable, it is secondary to our faith. Do I have a witness here? Amen. I mean, you know, because gold can perish, y'all, but our faith will endure. A faith in Jesus Christ will carry us through this life, even in the world, and to come. A faith in, in the death and the burial and the resurrection of our God, the Son of the Lord, is that more valuable than gold. Can I tell you, amen, even on Wall Street, I know they got some great commodities on Wall Street, but I've come by to tell you that your faith is more valuable than anything that they might have on Wall Street. Is there anybody here, amen, value your faith so much so that you are rich even when you are poor? I wish I had somebody in here, amen, because I have faith. Do I have a witness here? Of the size of a mustard seed, I can do a whole lot of things. I don't know about you, but you ought to hold on to your faith and don't let this world and the moral decay of this world, amen, take your faith from you. Somebody say, I'm going to trust him. I'm going to trust him all of the way. I'm going to trust him until things get better. I'm going to trust him until I begin to rise up out of this situation. I'm going to trust him until doors open on my behalf. I'm going to trust him until things begin to smooth out in my life. Your faith is valuable. To have a witness. So I don't know about you. Take my car, but don't take my faith. Do I have a witness? 
Amen. I didn't understand it. I didn't understand it then. Things happen. Things happen. I just told you. Amen. Reality is Christians have bad marriages and things like that. Well, story is told of this preacher. He's gone to be with the Lord now. He was going through a divorce, going through a divorce. He's at, amen, true story. He's at, he's at the courthouse. He's going to the courthouse, and, 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 and his wife, his, his, his soon-to-be ex-wife is right there, and the judge was asking him, says, now, brother preacher, brother preacher, what do you want from the house? What do you want from the house? Do you want anything in the furniture from the house? He said, well, he said no, I don't want anything. He says, what do you want? He says, all I want you to do is give me that Bible. He said, because if you give me that Bible, I'll preach and I'll get another house. <laughs> he said, if you give me that Bible, I'll get me another car. Do I have a witness here? I didn't understand it then. I thought it was being sarcastic. But I recognized he was talking about my faith. If I stand on my faith, do I have a witness here? I recognize that material things will come and go. But if I stand on my faith, God has a way. Y'all looking at me strange. God has a way of opening doors that were once closed in your face. God has a way of lifting you higher. Whatever you do, don't take my faith. I said, don't take my faith. Stand on your faith. Do I have a witness? Even if you have to stand on by yourself, stand on your faith. Well, all I'm trying to tell you is that sometimes there is a realignment. There's a realignment that has to take place in, in your life. I shared with them, amen, my own story that as Peter talks about this whole process of, 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 of gold and, and, and this metaphor of gold and our, and our faith. But recognize, understand that there's a realignment that has to take place for a whole lot of us. Amen. We've got to recognize and understand that God is doing some things in our lives when he allows some things to come. Amen. We hit some bumps along the way. There, it requires a realignment. I had to take my car to the shop a couple of weeks ago because it wasn't riding as smooth as I thought it should. And so I'm riding and it's hitting bumps and it's not absorbing the bumps and, and I'm feeling every bump and every little movement going on. Took it to the car dealership and they says, okay, Mr. Jones, we're going to check it out and put it on the diagnostic machine and then we'll give you a call. And when they called me, they says, we found out the problem. There are two things that you need. First of all, you need to get your tires balanced. Do I have a witness here? I said, you got to get your tires balanced. Help me somebody. I wish I could. Somebody, every now and then, some of y'all got to get, you got to be, amen, rebalanced. <laughs> I said, amen. I said, a rebalancing needs to take place because you're not rolling and flowing as smooth as you used to flow. And do I have a witness here? Maybe, you, maybe I'm the only one, but every now and then, the flow ain't there. And sometimes it has to be a rebalance. But he said, not only do we need to rebalance your tires, but we've got to do a realignment to your front end. I said, well, what, what, what happened? What caused my front end to, to go out? He says, what happens is you can hit so many bumps that all of a sudden, amen, the measurement and, 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 and what we do to keep it aligned and to absorb the bumps and hits in the road, amen, can be knocked out of alignment or knocked off. And so he says, we've got to make sure we realign you so that you can, amen, go smooth again. Do I have a witness here? Well, when I went and picked up the car, I was concerned. I wanted to make sure... Amen, because the car, the type of car I drive, ought to drive smooth. Do I have a witness? You, you, buy, you buy the Dyer BMW for the speed, but you buy a Mercedes for the ride. <laughs> Do I have a witness here? Y'all get that on your way home. And so, so the ride had to be smooth. And so, so, I, I, and so I, I got in it, and I began to drive it, and it was just as smooth as it could be. Do I have a witness here? It was like I was floating on a cloud. Can I tell you sometimes in life, your life has to be realigned. Because as life goes, every bump you run into, you can feel the shock of every bump. Do I have a why? Because maybe you're out of alignment. <laughs> Help me somebody. I wish I had time. Maybe you're out of alignment. You don't come to church the way you ought to come. Maybe because you're out of alignment because you don't come to Bible study the way you ought to come. Maybe you're out of alignment because you don't read your Bible the way you should read your Bible and every now and again God will cause you to hit some bumps amen that will cause you to shake you so much so that you got amen you say something has to happen to get me back in alignment but how many of you know there's nothing like being in alignment with God help 
me somebody amen that means when trouble comes and problems come you don't feel the shock of those troubles and those problems amen like you would if you were not in right alignment with God and so that's the reality of life amen that we have to be realigned stay with me I got one more and I'll be finished well not only do I see in this text y'all that the, amen there's a word about reality but there's a word about amen realignment but then there's a word about reliability reliability listen I'm trying to give you some reasons to be optimistic in verse 8 he says though you have not amen seen him you love him do I have a witness here you've not seen him but you love him and even though you do not see him now you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. Do I have a witness here? Amen. The, the Message Bible says it this way. You never saw him, yet you love him. You still don't see him. Here it is. Yet you trust him. But do I have a witness here? And the, and, and, and the message says with laughter and singing. So literally it speaks about our praise. And the beauty of this text is, amen, with the background of, of Peter. He shares with us and he lets us know that even in the midst of your life and what you are going through, you've not seen him, but you love him. And you love him because you can rely on him. And how many of you know there's a whole lot of people you can't rely on? And so reliability speaks to somebody's, amen, consistency. And I don't know about you, but the God that I serve is consistent. I said he's consistent. And I thank God that he's, he's reliable. I can, I can trust him. Amen. Is there anybody here that you can trust God? I said you can trust him all of the way. And so I'm finished, y'all. Praise God that we trust God. We trust him based on what we can't see. And how many know that's what faith is? Faith is the evidence of things. Do I have a witness here? Amen. And so we praise God for Hebrews chapter 11. We thank God for this faith. We thank God that, amen, even though we can't see how he's going to work things out, we keep on trusting him. We rely on him. Is there anybody here that's willing to, amen, to put all of your trust in him? You trust him when the doctors walk out. You trust him to walk in. Amen. Do I have a witness here? We trust him every day of our lives. I'm glad that I can rely on God. I'm glad that I can lean on him. I'm glad that I have confidence in him. I'm glad that he won't leave me or forsake me. Do I have a witness here? And so we began to love on him uh, even though we haven't seen him. But even though we haven't seen him, we've seen his work, Cephas. We've seen what God can do. Amen. For what he's done for others, he can do for you. Is there anybody here that's going to trust him until you die? Amen. I'm optimistic, y'all. I don't know what tomorrow holds but I know who holds tomorrow. I'm optimistic, y'all. Amen. Even though I look at the world and the world's problem, I'm optimistic that my God, amen, will be on the throne. That my God can speak and things can change. I'm optimistic that my God in whom I can't see know that I love him until the end. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. I'm finished, y'all. But is there anybody here that's going to hold on until the end? Trust him even though you can't see. Trust him even though you can't see your amen, your answer over the horizon. Trust him if you have to trust him on by yourself. Trust him because he's never fail me yet is he all right i said is he all right is he all right won't he come through won't he make a way 
Won't he bless your life? Won't he show up on time? Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Is he all right? Is he all right? Is he all right? He's reliable. He's reliable because he can be trusted. And the Bible says that they loved him even though they could not see him and did not see him. But watch this. They said they expressed themselves with an inexpressible joy. They began to praise him. My God. They began to bless his name. They began to just, I'm sure, if it was, it was a church that was on fire, they began to speak things to him. And I'm sure that somebody to my left began to say thank you. That you were there all of the time. Somebody over to the right began to bless him and, and say, Amen. Thank you for, for, for your omnipotence that you're everywhere at the same time. I, I don't know how you got here quick enough, but, but I, I'm reliable that my God is, is real and is true and he's right there. Amen. Somebody in the balcony began to lift up hands inexpressibly with joy and said, Amen. You don't know my story, but I thank God that I can trust God. Do I have to pick me up and to carry me and take care of me and do things for me that nobody else could do? Amen. I know God. Hey, the songwriter said he walks with me and talks with me and tells me that I'm his very own. They had a joy. I'm trying to get somebody. In the house, it was inexpressible. They began to bless God all over the place. Amen. Because even though they couldn't see him, they knew he was present. Is there anybody here that know that God is in the house? Is there anybody here that know that he walks with you? Is there anybody here that know that he holds your hand he keeps making a way is there anybody here that know that God won't leave you is there anybody here that know he'll hold you up praise God reasons to be optimistic reasons as bad as things look, <laughs> it gives us a word of reality. In the midst of your praise, I'm going to prepare you for what is to come. A word of realignment. Amen. Comes a realignment of your life. Tweaking and turning and putting things back in perspective. There's, there's, there's a realignment and then a word of reliability. We can trust God. The story is told of Don Sutton, who was a major league baseball player. He played for 20 years. 20 years. It says out of his 20 years, only one year where he won 20 games. But he put in 20 years. They said at the end of his career and his tenure, they labeled him Mr. Reliable. For 20 years, he, he didn't miss too many games. He was right there. And I said, wow, that's amazing. Then if they labeled him Mr. Reliable, then what would we label our God? who never misses a day. Never sick. Never has a headache. I, I wish I had a witness here. His gender is never too full to see about you. That he's always where he needs to be, when he needs to be. If he's Mr. Reliable, What do you call God? 
And I wish I could have a, I, we know he's Mr. Everything. But I wish there was something else we could talk about God. But I know he's Mr. Everything. I said, I know he, he's Mr. Everything. But, but I wish I had another phrase to describe him. Bless you. Appreciate that. Yes, yes, yes. That's our God. And so reasons to be optimistic. So hold your head up. Don't worry about who's going to get in the White House. Because God can handle them. Whoever it might be. And he should. We would want him to. Do I have a witness here? Whatever it is, God is reliable. Come on, everyone standing all over the building. You're here. My brother, my sister, wherever you are, man, woman, boy, your girl, you're here. You're not in Christ. You're not in church. You're, you're here. You're not in Christ. You're not in church.